we're going to get started is Anthony Hansen. He's an extension educator in fields, crops, and integrated pest management, or IPM. So um, Anthony is with us today to talk about insects. So welcome, Anthony. Um, great to have you with us today. Thanks, Brian, for introducing me. So what I'm going to cover today is kind of a, uh, basically, how to be an insect detective. And let me get my screen up here quick. So what I do is I mostly work with insects. Um, like Brian said, I, I work in field crops primarily, but uh, it can be basically any kind of pest that I work with, whether it's insects, weeds, or some diseases when crops get sick too. Uh, basically, I work over in Morris, but then we also farm with my family in Bruton, which is kind of right on that western side of Stearns County, over around Polk County too. So I'm kind of around the region here for uh, basically whether it's crop health or things like this too, whenever insects pop up, I'll kind of be keeping an eye on them, what's happening out here. So I mentioned basically being an insect detective. It's kind of an interesting little take on what we do for helping farmers out especially or in say your parents' gardens as well. And we get all of these different insects, but then other kind of related organisms out there too. You get all these millipedes, you get into crabs, crayfish, even spiders, they're all related to insects in some fashion or another. So it's a pretty big bunch where if you know a little bit about insects, you'll know a little bit about some of these other ones too. But I wanna focus mostly on the insect side of things a little bit. And as probably many of you know a little bit is some of these insects can be pests, whether it's in the farm fields or over in your gardens too. So this example here is a corn earworm. If you, over on the left, you might see that in you know, sweet corn in your garden, sometimes can be in the crop fields as well. Or you get these big tomato hornworms in gardens sometimes too. You might find those on tomatoes and some of your other plants too. So you can find some you know, somewhat small insects and some pretty big ones that cause problems out there. So those of us that work with insects, we're called entomologists. It's just entomology is the study of insects. And some things we do is, uh, besides looking at the insects, we basically work as plant doctors. So you've been to the doctor uh, just for checkups. We do the same thing for people's crops, their gardens, or else we're teaching people how to take care of their plants. And part of that is also being a bit of a detective. So in this case, uh, this person out there with a sweep net, basically, if you've ever had a butterfly net, it's pretty much the same thing. They're out there using the sweep net in their field, trying to find out what insects are out there. And we're basically looking to see, okay, who caused damage to you know, these plants? If we find a lot of feeding or something else on a plant, was it nearby insects that caused it? Or is it someone who basically left the scene, so to say, and what we do find around her at that time actually didn't cause any problems at all. So we have to sleuth out, sleuth out who basically is the perpetrator of you know, who did the damage to the crops. So to do that, we actually have to figure out what type of insects are out there. So it's actually a good idea to know how insects are put together. And that helps with finding out um, basically what may have been a culprit later on. We have some uh, kind of little quiz questions coming up. So insects, they have kind of three main regions. They have their head, then a thorax is their middle portion, and then an abdomen. And this will be the same across all insects. And they also have three pairs of legs, three pairs or six legs total. And this will be the same again for all insects. That's one way you can identify an insect versus say a spider that has eight legs or some of these millipedes or centipedes that have a lot more legs than that. And then you also have antennae as well. And I think Grace is raising a hand. Are spiders an insect? They're not, they're an arachnid. And one way to tell them apart is what I mentioned before a little bit is they have eight legs instead of six legs. So if you really wanna know if it's a spider or an insect, that's probably the easiest way to tell. Obviously don't, don't go trying to pick up spiders. I thought Daddy Long Leg related to scorpions. Is that true? They're, well, actually Daddy Long Legs, scorpions and spiders, they all have some relation but some are more closely related to others. So it's kind of similar to how you might have your brothers and sisters, you're very closely related to them or your parents. But if 
say your cousins, you're a little less related to them. So that's kind of how that works there. But yeah, daddy long legs are kind of more in the group over with the spiders and then they're not as similar to the insects. Okay. <laughs> Good question. So that's kind of just how insects look and how they're put together. One other thing we look about or look at, and you've probably seen examples of this before, is the insect life cycle. They have what we call complete metamorphosis. And this is with butterflies especially, but you also see it with some other groups too. So this is one way we kind of split apart the insects a little bit and find out, okay, we found a young insect out here. Who does it belong to? And can we identify who it is? So in this case, um, you know, a young butterfly would be called a larva. That's your caterpillar, basically. They turn into a pupa and then eventually an adult butterfly. There's another group of insects out there. They have what's called incomplete a metamorphosis. And these are your grasshoppers and what we call true bugs. So I'll, I'll mention bugs a little bit in this talk. They're actually a certain type of insect. Sometimes we'll say bugs to cover all insects, but for us scientists, at least we try to kind of keep the names a little bit separate because there's this other group that uh, we call actual bugs. But in this case, they're called nymphs. They hatch from an egg and they basically don't look very or they don't look too different than their parents or the adults. So just kind of keep growing basically like you do, where when you're young, you look pretty similar to an adult. You're just smaller for the most part. Whereas over on that other group, the butterflies, they look pretty different as they go through each of their life stages. Now this is kind of a graph with a lot more information. You don't need to worry about it too much here, but I wanted to highlight one little part on here is when we're identifying insects, we especially look at how they eat things and we look at their mouth part basically. So some insects like grasshoppers, my mouse comes up here, and then beetles, they have what we call chewing mouth parts. So it's kind of just chompers pretty much where they're taking out chunks of leaves. And that can be pretty obvious to try to identify for a sign that, okay, we know it's a certain group of insects that has chewing mouth parts that did something to a crop. Other ones like bugs that I mentioned, they have what are called piercing or sucking mouth parts. And I'll show you some pictures of that in a little bit here. So I mentioned the beetles, they have those chewing mouth parts. This beetle on the very bottom is a really good example of that has pretty big jaws, where it'll go chase after other insects actually. And both these are actually beneficial insects, both the bottom one and then the top one is a lady beetle, which I'm sure many have seen that before too. So they have those chewing mouth parts, so I to keep in mind. Grasshoppers are kind of the same. They will be chewing on leaves. You see this top picture here where it's actually damaging that plant a little bit. That'll be a sign that we use to determine, okay, maybe it was a beetle, or maybe it was a grasshopper out there. So we call um, moths and butterflies. There are other names out there. If you saw that graph before, I had Lepidoptera for kind of a fancier name up there. But in this case, um, the young are actually a little bit different. They have the chewing mouth parts too, but when they become adults, they actually lose their mouth for the most part, and then they kind of get a new mouth. So that's what's so different about these butterflies. And that way you can have young butterflies eating a plant, and then when they're adults, they're not really eating the plant anymore. They might be siphoning up nectar with that kind of coiled up mouth you can see on this bottom picture. Then I mentioned the bugs too, and might have to move, um, Kind of the camera pictures if it doesn't show up, but on the far right, there is a picture of a bug. You can see it kind of has a beak to it almost that I highlighted. And that's what they use to basically pierce into the plant. And it's kind of like a mosquito almost, the equivalent of a plant. We have mosquitoes that bite us. Plants basically have other bugs that poke holes into them and suck sap out of them. And some of these bugs can be pests. We have soybean aphid, beta leaf hopper. But there are helpful ones too. There's kind of a cool one I like, it's called the pirate bug. And it kind of has this checkerboard pattern on it. It looks like a pirate flag a little bit. That's partly where it, its name might've come from. But then it also actually kind of has like a fencing sword a little bit. It uses its mouth to attack other insects, usually pests, and it will eat them that way. So it can basically use it kind of like a pirate sword and go after those. And then there are other bugs out there too, like this damsel bug. So it's kind of a good mix, mix of insects out there that can um, do different things and how they eat things or how their mouth is set up helps us for figuring out uh, what they might be doing a little bit later here now. So I mentioned a few of these feeding types. 
there's just a couple of basically these chewing ones, beetles, grasshoppers, caterpillars, also some bees and wasps. And then the piercing mouth parts, these are the bugs, the kind of things like mosquitoes or some flies like your flies. Then there's some other flies that aren't going to be damaging plants at all. They have these kind of spongy mouth parts. So here's a question for people. I'm sure you can put it in the chat if you want. I'm sure you know this is a mosquito here. So do you think this has a piercing or a chewing mouth part? This is going to be hopefully an easier question to start people off. First response is piercing. Okay. Another piercing. I don't think anyone's disagreeing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with that then. Yep, that's uh, piercing mouth parts there. So that's kind of a good example I like to use for mosquitoes there because you can feel them poke you definitely when they try to do that. That's kind of how it works with the plants too, like I mentioned. So this one is a Japanese beetle here. Do you think this beetle could be the cause of the holes on this leaf? Or is it maybe someone else that, um, does this beetle have the right mouth parts? It could cause those holes in there. Remember beetles have those chewing mouth parts. There is a no, a maybe, maybe not. Okay. <laughs> Give it just yes. a couple more seconds. All right. And a maybe. Okay. Well, they the answer. They are making the holes with That's that a... sharp legs. Um, they are actually making the holes, but it's with their mouth parts. And the legs, they, they actually latch on really well. So that's how they hold onto the plant, especially when they'll you can see kind of a little bit where that leg is in the hole. They can really latch on well in that case. So it's kind of the right idea there where they are using their legs and those holes together a little bit. So let's say a fly came on here, and this is kind of where my job comes in a little bit, is you, know, you might find those holes on there. Also, oh, there's this fly over here. I mentioned how it has kind of sponging mouth parts that just kind of will sop up anything that's wet or kind of goopy on the leaf. And did that cause the problems or not? And I'll give you the answer to that one, but in that case, it didn't cause that damage because it can't poke holes through like that, at least that uh, this example of a fly at least. So we know that sometimes you find an insect out there, it's not always the one causing a problem. Sometimes they're just innocent insects that they're just out there on the plant too, just kind of checking out the place and not really doing anything. So that's why we're kind of careful. We don't always just say, well, because there's insects out there, that you have a problem. Sometimes they're really not doing very much at all. And they're just either kind of enjoying the day or um, just waiting for something else to come by, especially if they eat other pest insects. So here's a little trickier one. It's, you can't really see the insect too well on here. This is a soybean leaf. And I mentioned, you know, again, those groups, you can have your beetles, your caterpillars, or you can see these other ones too, some of these bugs. So in this case, you can see some of the chewing on the leaves. That limits it down a little bit too, but then there's this webbing on here. So again, remember that uh, spiders aren't insects. So can you think of something else that produces webbing for insects that might be chewing on something? Yes, silkworms. I'll go with that one there. Um, silkworms, generally we'll find them on this plant, but they are going to be pretty similar. A lot of caterpillars will produce silk, and this particular one is called a leaf roller, so it actually kind of rolls the leaf up and makes its home in there. So it uses that silk to kind of protect itself, and then other parts of the leaf it will eat away. So in some ways it's kind of eating its home, but then it'll move on to another leaf. So this is the um, thistle caterpillar it actually turns into the painted lady butterfly. So this is an example where a butterfly is actually eating some crops in some cases. And these are pretty common butterflies. You might see these across the summer sometimes. They're, I'd say just a little less common than your monarch butterflies, but no chance you'll see them. Now this is the trickiest question I have for you. And I mentioned a little bit about how some insects have uh, piercing or sucking mouth parts. 
So in this case, this plant, I didn't find any insects on there at that time, but it looks pretty sick. So what are your guesses is, is this a disease maybe that's causing this? Or was there something feeding on this plant? And this could be tricky even for uh, some adults too. So I'm just curious maybe what kind of guesses. Maybe a cat, maybe a cat. Peed cat, on. huh? <laughs> that is possible. Like that one. Um, I see Any other peed on. <laughs> Any other uh, guesses out there? Um, I see about three guesses that it's a disease. Um, okay. One guess that it's a feeding. All right. And I would say your guesses are pretty similar to what we'd uh, see from a farmer sometimes who haven't seen this. It's actually an insect who caused this. So remember I mentioned how some of those um, Bugs can basically be like mosquitoes, the plants. This is a very similar one where it was poking holes in the plants and can, uh, sucking out the sap from it. The plant got sick just from that bug um, eating on it. Even though you couldn't see the leaves being removed or chewing on there, it still made the plant basically get sick. So it can be confusing sometimes. You don't know if a plant got sick with something with a disease or if it was something else like an insect that was causing something there. So some of these insects can get pretty tricky. And again, this is kind of how I mentioned how we, we're acting as an insect detective. That can be pretty important for finding out what kind of insects are out there. I have a few examples, just other insects I have. Most of these aren't pests at all, but being able to sort of kind of get an idea of, okay, what kind of mouth parts does the insect have? Um, in the case of this box over on the left, a lot of those are moths and butterflies. What are their young going to look like? They're going to be little caterpillars potentially chewing on something. And you get a good idea of just how broad the group of insects can be just by seeing all these examples here. Some of them actually look pretty cool too. When you go over on the right, you have to go down into the tropics for some of these more colorful ones. But you get a kind of broad array of different insects that can show up, whether it's in your garden or in your crops. So with that, that's uh, kind of what I have for my little quiz and presentation. Does anyone have questions just on insects in general?